Installing Power Automate for desktop is very easy, but maybe you already have it. It's standard in Windows 11. To find out, go to your start menu, search for Power Automate. If you can't find any icons, you're not having it. Then we will install it. You can either install it by clicking the link here on the course page or go to Google. Here you can just search for Power Automate Desktop Download. Take the first link here. Go down to download the Power Automate installer and click it. That will download the exe file of 240 megabyte. You can click it when it's finished. This will start the installer. We can click next. Choose your location. I will just choose the default and I will accept the terms. Then I click install. You might see, you might see a security pop up. You can just click yes to that and then we will install this package. You should choose to install both browser extension here. We will take the Google Chrome first. So click it, click add to Chrome. Add extension. That's it. We can now automate with Microsoft Power Automate for desktop in Chrome. Similarly, we will go back to our installer and choose the Microsoft Edge extension. Here we will take get, add extension. We'll now have the Power Automate for desktop extension for Edge as well. We can close the browser. Now we will launch the app. Take a few seconds. And if you have it in another language than English, I have it in Danish here, we want to change it to English because this course will use all the English activities. You will also use it when you start to build your own robots because all the documentation is in English. To change the language to English, we'll need to go to the start menu. So click up here, search for language settings, click it. Down here in preferred languages, we need to add a language or we, if you already have an English down here, you just need to move it up in the front. So add a language if you don't see English here or like me, just move it up in front here. To update it in Power Automate for desktop, we either need to log completely out of Windows and of course shut Power Automate for desktop down or we can use another trick. So click the start menu, then just start typing CMD. This will open the command prompt. This is also something that we will use in much more advanced lessons, but for now we will just use it to kill Power Automate for desktop by force. And with kill, I mean to close it down completely so we can open it again. So if you just start writing task kill forward slash F, forward slash im and then we will specify the power automate process that is pad console host.exe i'll wait a few seconds so you can start writing then we'll click enter this will close down the process and when i open up power automate for desktop again by clicking the start menu search for power automate We'll open it. In a few seconds, we have our login screen and now you can see it's in English. Fine. Then you want to use your Microsoft login to log in. Mine is this one here. And I'll click sign in. Put in your password and click sign in. This might either log you in directly or if you have two factor authentication like me activated in your Microsoft account, you'll need to approve it on your mobile. I'll click approve now like this. This will log us in and getting things ready. There you go. If you have previously flows like me, you can find them here. You will probably start from scratch. So this will empty. Don't worry. We will build everything we'll need from scratch. So click new flow up here. We will give our flow a name. You can give your flow whatever name you want. I can call it first robot. Then I click create. A few seconds will went by and we have now our first robot opened. We have no actions in it. And if I just maximize this and let me just clean a little bit up here in my apps. 
we can close the command prompt. We will not use that anymore. I'll also close down the language settings like here. That's it. It's only to have a cleaner look here on my desktop. Let's create a very simple robot that do some basic tasks in an application. We will use Notepad, but the same principle apply if you want to automate much more advanced applications. You can try that, pause the video and do it with your favorite application, but we'll use Notepad. So first we'll go over here to the actions. This is where our predefined code blocks hides. For example, if I go into Outlook, you can see some Outlook activities. These activities we can drag into the canvas here. We will not use the Outlook activities though. We will find a run application like this and we will drag it in. Behind this parameter pop-up, you can see that we actually have an action here. And this is our canvas. We'll get back to that. First, we will need to provide an application path for our application. To find a notepad application path, you go up to start menu, then you start typing notepad. Right click here, open file location. This is another shortcut, you can see it here. So right click again and open the file location. Here you have it. So this is the application path. This is where our application lies, the executable for that. So what you'll do here is that you'll press shift and then right click with your mouse, copy as path. Go back to Power Automate for desktop. Now you can control V, paste in the application path here. We can also delete the quotation marks around it. This will not be needed. Then I can click save. And now let's run our first robot. So if we click run here, we have opened up a notepad. Isn't that cool? You build your first robot. Well done. Let me close notepad down again. So here is our dragged in action. This is our main canvas. Here we will drag in all our actions and they will be performed from top to bottom. That means if we drag in another action, do it like this, this action up here will be performed first and then this one, it's sequential. But let me click cancel, we will only open up one application in this flow. Let's also add a log. Here we will just have a display message that pops up to the user. So go over to actions again, then find a display message and drag it in. This is just a message box that pops up to the user. We can give it a title. I will just say log and then we will have our message to display. Here I will say your robot ran successfully like this and I click save. If I try to run the robot again, so if I click run, you'll see that we open up our notepad and then we have our log here. This will pause the workflow, this pop-up, you can see that our robot run, you can see it had ran for 13 seconds and counting. And when I click OK, the robot has no more actions to perform. It has stopped and is ready to run once more, either in this flow or another one. We also want to type something in our application. So go over to your actions again and don't worry, you will learn these names. They are very easy, especially if you repeat them. So it's very important that you build these things with me in this course. I'll promise you that after this course, you have learned every action that we have used. Here, since you don't know it, search for a populate text field in window. It's very important that you take this form filling and not the web form filling. So drag this one in from the form filling after the display message. Here we have some parameters to fill in. We have a text box. This will define which field we are filling into it. And here we'll have the text. So if I go up here to the text and then click this drop down, you can see that we have no UI elements. UI stands for user interface. That is everything you see here on your screen. These buttons over here, this program, browsers, everything that we can touch. Each one is a UI element with an address. And if I click add UI element, you'll see that this UI element picker opens up and we can now pick UI elements. Since we want to send text into this document, you'll find it here. And what you will do is that you press the control button, 
left click with your mouse and we have now created a UI element. Now we can type something into it. I'll say hello world like this. Then I'll click save and let's try to run the robot once more. So if I click run here, we will run the application and now you'll see this sequence that I talked about. So we'll first perform the run application that will open up a new notepad instance. Then we'll have the display message. And after we ha are done with that, we can only skip this if we click OK here. Then we will start to fill in the hello world into the text field like here. So now you created a robot that can actually type into applications. But let us change the order of these two. So if I drag this display message down to the button, we will have our lock in the end. One important thing is that if I go over here, you can see that our robot opens up a new notepad instance every time it runs. So why don't we close it after this display message? So if I find a close window here, I'll drag it in after the display message. Here I'll choose the standard that is by window UI element. That is how we'll find the notepad window. Then we will go down here to the window and we will pick the UI element that we just created, pick the window untitled notepad and not the document text editor like this. Now I will click save and then I'll try to run my robot. So if I click run here, I'll open the application. I will start typing in in a few seconds. I'll click OK. And now we are closing down this application. But look what's happened. This pop up pops up. This is a problem that you'll face often as an RPA developer, or should I call it a challenge? That is, pop ups are cure. We'll need to handle that. Here we will just click cancel. This is another document that we want to save. So if I just move it a little bit over here and go back to my Power Automate 4 desktop. Before we handle the click, let me show you a nice feature. If I go over here, you can see variables. These are the variables produced in our workflow. If I click this stack over here, you can see that the UI elements that we create gets created over here in the UI elements section. We do want to rename it so we can easily find it. So instead of document text editor, this is the UI element of the text field. You can even see a picture down here. If I click here, you can see and pick a picture of its placement. So if I close this one down here, I can either press F2 or I can right click, rename, and then we'll give it a better name. I will just say notepad input field like this. Always rename your UI elements and everything. I'll repeat this a lot until it sticks. So now we have our UI element over here. We also needed to click when we save it, we want to click cancel. So go over to your actions again, find a click UI element in window, that is this one, and drag it in after the close window. Here we'll need to define a UI element once more. So click the drop down here and choose add UI element. This will again open up the UI element picker and we want to click the cancel. So press control and then click cancel. We have now created the cancel button. You can see here we want to left click, that's fine. I click save. One other thing is that we can again rename it over here. Button cancel, that seems right. That was a right and descripting name. We'll use that. Let me close down all our um, notepad instances over here so we can easily see what's going on. So if I click run now, we will populate the text a little in a little while. Click OK. We are saving, we are trying to close it and now we click cancel. This will not close down the application. So to easily fix this, say that we want to change the UI elements. We want to click don't save and not cancel. So I need to reproduce this pop up and we reproduce it when we try to close. Here it is. Then we can go over to our UI elements once more. Here you can see that we have our cancel button. Let's add the don't save button as well. So if I click add UI element, I will take the don't save button, press control and click the don't save. Here it pops up, I can click done. 
Now we want to change the button. We want to change it from cancel to don't save. I need to move inside my activity here and in the UI element, click the drop down here. Here we can change it to don't save. Do that and then click select. Click save. We have our workflow. Let me close down the notepad again and try to run it this time. We are running it. We are populating the text field in a little while here. Our lock message. Then we will close the window. We will click don't save and our robot ran successfully. Well done. We have covered a lot and you're ready for the next lesson, which is on the screen.